on to you, Mr. Martino. Yeah, well, my guest is a, a international filmmaker. He's actually uh, made films now all over the world, Bulgaria uh, being one of the international spots, but he's also done a lot in New England, uh, including a film I worked on with him, which is where I met him about now, about, about five years ago. We did Bridge Crusader, and he's gone on to do a whole bunch of other films, including uh, Planet Diva. He was a guest of ours uh, earlier this year talking about that film. Uh, but now, now, John Hartman is working on a new film called Gothenstein, and he's filming that locally. So, John, welcome to the show. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow that, that was... No, that was smooth. Yeah, it was smooth. very smooth. I'm digging it. I can hear your beard with that. <laughs> uh, he does He does have a, a, a great head of hair there that would... Uh, the envy of many, many balding men, so... <laughs> Great, Matt. You 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 just alienated the the entire um uh, bald population of, right. of our audience. Talk about who we alienate, but uh, yeah, no, uh, bald guys like oh, thank you. <laughs> so so John, you're you're mostly based out of Colorado, but we've got you in New England. So you're working on this project, Gothenstein, right? Yes, but I'm nomadic, so I, I come and go. And um, <laughs> Gothenstein is um, filmed entirely in uh, New England. Yeah, because I'm here and it's what I'm doing right now. So kind of has to be that way. Tell us a little bit about uh, Gothenstein. What is it about? Is it about a monster made up of uh, gothic people, or is it something uh, a little more than that? I, Let's I, hear it. I like that. I An angry you, goth. I wish you told me that before. I could have used that. No, it's, uh, it's a fellow that um, has appeared in my films in the past, uh, a character known as Brother in the Black Bag, uh, which is this dude, this gothic dude, that just wears this black burlap bag, and he walks around, and he, you know, he rolls around in seaweed, and he does a bunch of weird stuff. <laughs> Uh, and essentially, he was just, um, he would make appearances in my films, and I never really uh, revolved the story around him. And I thought, wow, you know, Planet Diva, we did a bunch of weird stuff, and there's weird people in Boston, so why not? <laughs> right, and, and you're sitting in the hub of what is essentially where weird people in Boston uh, listen to music. So. I see. <laughs> I see. <laughs> I see. I see. I see. <laughs> you saying that I were weird, Matt? What you um, saying? I, I think, uh, how about alternative? Does that sound better? No, I'll take no. weird. Yeah, yeah no. Weird. Okay, Actually, weird's better than that. <laughs> I like you. I like you. I like you. Um, I like you too, John's yeah, beard. If you like me, you'd be naked. John's got a pretty, <laughs> yeah. John's got a pretty impressive uh, film resume. I, I, I mean, how many feature films have you done now? I think it's uh, that I can count that I know of. It's it's about six, isn't it? Oh, no, not quite. More than I, that? I'm or? thinking I'm thinking Four. Yeah, four? Four. And that you did uh, a compilation of short films too. Cause I, I've got a, I've lost track of how many <laughs> short films I've got. I have so many short films, documentaries, music videos, and so forth. I've lost track a lot, a whole lot. Right. I'm probably counting the compilation as a feature, even though that's a sort of a separate DVD. Correct. That, Th- that would be yeah. a compilation of short films. Yeah. Right. Right. So uh, yeah, and um, let's see. So so you've got some uh, dates coming up that you want to give us about shows that you have too, so we can watch your stuff. Yes. Yes. Let's uh, hear about it. I love how you have your beard that's like your backup man. Yeah. <laughs> is, he, is he like your flavor flavor for the whole thing? No, no. He's a hype man. <laughs> it's just a security blanket, please. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, Planet Diva, which is another kind of fetishy type film, uh, will be screening here in Boston uh, on, we think, December the 6th at the Public Access in Brookline, the Brookline Theater, Public Access. Uh-huh. And... Let's see. That is for the fifth experimentally ill film festival. Um, oh, we're actually right. going to have them on on the show uh, next week. Yes, right. I've heard that. And uh, their dates are December fifth and seventh at Somerville, uh, the Coolidge Corner on the thirteenth of December. Right. So you've got Planet Diva uh, and uh, and Gothenstein. These are the two sort of New England phenomenons. Hopefully, that we're going to be having uh, coming up. So we'll be able to see pl- your work. What makes them phenomenal? Um, um, phenoms. Well, I like to think that any film that's made in New England is a phenom because, uh, especially independently, because uh, it's such a struggle to get our stuff done as a guy who's been an independent filmmaker. So, so t- tell us a little bit about Planet Diva because I know uh, our listeners who may not have heard you the first time want to know what they're uh, going to go see. Planet Diva is a, a grindhouse film. Um, it was just selected uh, as an official selection for the Poly Grind Film Festival. Oh wow! Which is very hard for me. I usually don't get selected. My stuff is too weird or confusing or whatever. The list is long um, as to why I'm not selected. But this was selected, so I'm told it's my best work. Uh, it's certainly my kinkiest work. Oh, nice. Um, so you're a David Lynch fan. Well, yeah, I am. John Waters, David Lynch. But, you know, oh, hell yeah. I, don't do, I don't do hardcore kink. And, and usually there's a light at the end of the tunnel. There's a meaning. 
Uh, I know that's strange, you know, to put the audience through a dark tunnel and then show them the light using Grindhouse as the dark tunnel and then have a spiritual message at the end. I know that's strange, but that's probably why I do it because it hasn't been done before, so... No, yeah. nothing wrong with that. The more you mix up the different genres together, the more you evolve the whole thing to be able to actually become a new genre in itself. <laughs> I really like you. Uh, so like what I said, if you liked me, you'd be naked. Yeah. What? <laughs> Not in that way. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you know, it's radio, you know. Suddenly no everything's gotten kinkier. Uh, <laughs> so so uh, give us the plot outline of Planet Diva because I've heard it and it's pretty interesting. Uh, Planet Diva, okay. So there's a chemical war that uh, changes... All of the women into divas, essentially, and all men into sissy boys. So uh, there's a few men, there's a few women that um, do not succumb to this chemical warfare, and they're normal, and they try to reestablish the harmony of, of the planet. Um, unfortunately, they have to fight diva gangs and so forth before they do it, and there's a lot of bootlicking and pony riding and fetishy type stuff before that happens. Go uh-huh. on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, I mean, Gothenstein's pretty much the same thing. Really? So is there a different story to it, or is it a continuation, a sequel? In that sense? Of, of Gothenstein? Yeah. No. Gothenstein's a new thing. It was supposed to be just a playful thing of five minutes. But then my film partner, Z Zarbach, decided to um, produce the film, which means I can use super 16 millimeter film, which is much better. And so because of that, we thought we would up the ante a little bit and try to make it as interesting as possible. So we have a guy in a Sasquatch outfit. We have a goth robot. Um, we have lighthouses. We have uh, historic cemeteries. Uh, we have very um, interesting burlesque dancers. Oh, great. Uh, we have the renowned, locally renowned Aslahan, who's a belly dancer, a very beautiful woman, Aslahan. You may have seen her perform. Yes, um, I, ha- I know who you're talking she's about. She's exquisite. And she's the bride of Gothenstein. She looks <laughs> just like the original bride of Frankenstein. Oh, wow. It's, awesome. It's uncanny. Little Lily Munster there. Oh, better. Uh, better. <laughs> you know, I don't want to judge Lily Munster. She's, she's foxy, but, but Aslahan is. Yeah. She's, she's great. I probably know the burlesque dancers, if only because... Uh, Yes. We seem, yeah, we seem to associate a lot with them since we've uh, <laughs> a lot of the we've had a few of them as guests, and my roommate uh, actually manages most of the burlesque troops in Boston. <laughs> but of course, <laughs> yes, we're so, up yeah. to Karen Webb. Yeah, Karen Webb. Yeah, she's also a burlesque dancer. She's been on here. Do you know Richard Murphy? That sounds familiar. Swamp Yankee Network, Richard Murphy. Okay, yes. Renowned yeah. journalist. He is the Dr. Gothenstein. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Gothenstein essentially is the monster. It's the monster. It's not about the doctor. Ah. It's about the monster. He's about six foot six in his boots. He's two hundred pounds, and and he's got you know like white clown makeup, and he's like he's supposed to look like Frankenstein, but he likes he likes to be tied up, and he likes to be beaten and teased and ride rid like a horse and stuff like that. Like every good goth, show. right? <laughs> but he's a good. He's a very charming, loving teddy bear goth. Ah, he's not a mean goth. He's not hardcore. Yeah. Uh, I never actually met a mean goth. I'm like, what do you mean by that? You know what? The stereotype I, I, is there. I, I, I'd like the one I, here is are, the run, ones around here are usually a little bit more docile. You know what? I think you're right. I think you're right. I've misspoke. I, I have never actually met a mean goth myself. I think they're very sensitive people because they're part of the counterculture. Yeah. I think there's this weird perception when you watch like uh, the Simpsons, uh, not the Simpsons, the South Park, and you see like the goths are these guys who are like all like cynical, jerky, hating, e- emo. hating, emo. yeah, emo, yeah. hating. And it's kind of funny because you go hang out in the scene, and it's more like they just kind of are there for the music. Matt, they kind of want that happening. You should you should make a gothic film because they do stuff. <laughs> Nat- they do stuff naturally. There's no there's no barriers, man. They just. You don't need actors. They just they act. Do your thing and let me f- roll the camera. So it's more it's a more documentary aspect then. The yeah. Actual no. Actually, yes. Not not bad. Not bad. That's pretty warm. I would say that it's um, a film slash happening. It's an actual uh-huh. event because when you get out there, I don't have a script. I don't even have a developed outline. I have a basic outline. It's like okay, here's here's the here's the location. Of course, it's almost always illegal location. <laughs> and have the fun. Can we just figure out what they feel comfortable doing and we just do it? Yeah. So it's kind of like the film uh, writes itself. In the moment, yeah. uh, I, I find it really cool that there's a lot of improvisational aspect to it because in, yes. in any form of film that I've worked involved with, it's very just like regimented. Yeah. Like this has to be this time. This we have this because we're gonna run out of money. Yeah, yeah exactly. I feel like yeah. All, both you guys, Max, or like we're on daylight too. I I, I, yeah. I remember on Bridge Crusader asking like, okay, so can I see a script? And you're like, well, <laughs> <laughs> we might, we might be able to give you a couple of lines that you we think you might want to say. It's Certain like it's point. like script, yeah, uh, and so really we kind of just went out and and yeah. sort of did our thing and it got filmed and not, then kind of put it together. Bad, not a bad analogy, you know. Those guys, you know, the medieval dudes, they like to get out and fight, and that's basically what it was. Eric Eastman galvanized um, that demographic and and said, look, 
um, we're going to go out and fight. I'm, somebody's going to film it and memorialize it in film. Do your thing, man. We'll see what happens. You know, whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, and that's pretty much the way I film. It's where you just kind of let the intuitive world work through you and see what happens. Great. Sometimes nice. it works, and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> and then things get creepy. You know, you lose money, like you said. Oh, there's that too. Yeah, so it's a gamble. It's a gamble. Well, Miles Davis said it, it was like 90% improvisation ends up being crap. But that's there's 10% that's absolute gold. Wow. Mm-hmm. If I had those odds, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, well, speaking of those <laughs> odds, uh, I think you make a very interesting artistic choice when you, you always want to shoot on film. Like, you do pretty much everything on 16 millimeter. Um, um, no, I sin. I sin. Do you I actually? Use, oh, I so use you digital. Do digital? Sure. I use digital um, when I have to. Um, when affordable, I use uh, Super Six, Super Eight is what I go Super to eight. usually because I'm usually I'm a starving artist, man. I'm usually broke. <laughs> but uh, now that Ziz Arbach, my film partner, wants to um, produce and, and make, we're making a film together. It's been many years since we've done this. Uh, she's decided to uh, to um, lo- logistically cover it for Super Sixteen, which means it has to be kind of good. Uh, <laughs> so we invited some pretty special people and. I know it seems like I'm not prepared, but I did kind of have a shot list, kind of. And then I lost it, but I remembered most of it. <laughs> so things worked out uh, pretty good. And we were scheduled to uh, film in Salem on October 28th, but then Hurricane Sandy. Oh, wow. Damn you, Sandy. Well, it turned out to be good because uh, we didn't have the people. And then a week later, for some reason, a lot of people started coming out of nowhere. Like, wow, yeah, let's do this, man. You want to do this weird shit? Oh, excuse me, am I allowed to say shit? Oh, yeah. you're totally fucking allowed to, to say shit. Um, yeah, we're, we can say whatever the fuck we want. Exactly. Shit and F word. <laughs> My God, the right. scandal. The F stands for savings. You're listening to unregularradio.com. This is Citywide Blackout on regularradio.com. We're joined live in the studio by John Hartman, who's got several upcoming film uh, premieres, screenings happening. John, so uh, where do folks go if they want to find out more about you, check out the screen dates, etc.? Real Groovy Films. That com. And that's R E E L. R E E L Groovy Films. com. Also, uh, I have a, a Gothenstein um, fan page on Facebook. Okay, great. So that's Planet Diva and and Gothenstein, which is filming now in New England. So we've got two choices there. Yeah, so that's you can right. Go check out and uh, see John Hartman's work and he's got a pretty impressive body of work we said like four feature films and like 40 <laughs> shorts that he stopped counting at, so at least yes. he's got a lot going on very countercultural countercultural there's that beard again Se- seriously that, that beard's got, got a, a, a life of its own alternative <laughs> oh god I like to hear a beard podcast uh, but we, yeah seriously we, we've got a strong uh, countercultural uh, listening base so I think they're going to be hip to what you're uh, trying to say. good sell, with so. a positive message at the end of it all I have to, yeah, have to that's, put that that's pretty much what on regular radio is isn't it we're a, very positive and, here yeah a countercultural positive message kinky solutions with a lot of kinky solutions. <laughs> hey, what's what we're all about? <laughs> all right, so that's been John Hartman, local filmmaker, international filmmaker, and uh, overall uh, countercultural guru. Yeah. I th- thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> You're very welcome, John. Thanks very much. Sincerely, thank you. Okay. Okay. <laughs>